Hello, welcome to KJ Badminton Parental Coffee Talk. Earlier we talked about the ecosystem, if you still remember, three corners to form the ecosystem that we need to have in order to make things effective, to make things learn quicker. Number one, the parent corner. Number two, the player's corner. And of course, last but not least, number three, the coach corner. So the triangle with that ecosystem form, it's going to tremendously move the player forward once all three corners are engaged and commit. Today, we talk about the player's corner and what would player need to commit to. It's very, very big topic here because eventually it will recraft the character of your kid may that be a boy or a girl, they will need to understand a few things and act on it, most importantly, in order to benefit and eventually move forward. Number one, understanding the value of hard work. Yes, it is hard work needed. In badminton, you do not go into the court, you do not take a lesson and become a Lee Chong Wei tomorrow. It will not happen. It is about consistently putting in hard work and value the hard work that you have put in. I'll give you an example. In badminton, there are two major parts of the self-development that you, need, you must have in order to be good. Number one, stamina. Number two, skill. The most, most fundamental block. If you don't have any one of this, it's gone case. So let's talk about stamina. Stamina would require you to put in a lot of time in order to do exercise, in order to build your lung to be quicker in terms of recovery, in terms of uh, capacity, and in terms of muscle. Uh, those are all stamina factors, and we definitely go into that uh, in one of the videos that we're going to talk about later. So that's number one. Stamina takes time. <laughs> you will not have stamina uh, overnight. Okay. Number two, of course, skill, right? Still, Scale itself will take a lot of practice. If you want to have, do your spin net really, really good, once you spin, it's so near to the net so that people cannot lift it, you will have to practice, keep practicing it. So it's all hard work. Back of court, you want to do jumping smash, you want to cue at least more power, more speed on the jumping smash that you executed. It requires a lot of practice. So it's no other than hard work that's needed for you to get in there and be good at it. You have to keep repeating the practice and that repeat itself, it is a lot of hard work required. So understand the hard work, accept them, and go do it. Number two, what would the player would need to commit? They need to understand the importance of acquiring knowledge in badminton. Yeah, it looks easy. It's a court, you go in there and you play and you want to win. But how do you win? How do you play? How do you execute and set up your game plan? It's a lot of knowledge. How do you understand the profile of your player? How do you deal with certain players in different scenarios? So they're all knowledge. And knowledge comes from <coughs> experience. And knowledge comes from a lot of uh, sparring session, a lot of uh, dialogue with coaches, a lot of reading, a lot of referencing on YouTube videos, looking at how other players are doing it. So it's all about knowledge. And once you acquire it, you have to use it. It's not keeping inside and, and just let it be. It is practically using it on the court at the time when you take the shot. So it is utmost critical to understand that appreciating knowledge, may that be in the court, may that be in a book, on uh, uh, internet, from the, the people that you talk to is all knowledge and better still, lock it down. Eventually become an a encyclopedia of your very own. So that part of it, the player will need to understand. Without knowledge, you go nowhere. So having the player, which is, you know, young kids, to pick it up and utilize it, okay, it's good for them. It's really, really good for them. May that be now, may that be future. It's the same behavior, it's the same character, the same action that will lead them to success. That's number two. So we have talked about the hard work, we talk about the knowledge, and of course, the third one, I would really want to take this one up that's critical, critical, and that's consistency in commitment. What does that mean? In any player's 
in any player that's getting more serious and they have to commit to a series of training, a series of uh, gym, for example, a series of exercising, a series of sparring, competition, it's very repetitive. When I say that, leave the competition out of the picture for now. Just assume that, hey, in a typical week, a typical week, you would go to school, obviously, may that be morning school and afternoon school, and you would actually schedule the time that you have with training and, of course, exercising to build your stamina. So that itself, you just imagine on Monday to Friday, assuming that you are morning school right now. In the morning, yes, you wake up, you would go to school, 7 to 1 o'clock when you get back off from school, you would need to schedule a training and you have to go into a training. And that would take you from, let's just say, for example, 3 to 6 p.m. After you get home, you have to quickly work on your homework, understand what's going on, uh, what's going to happen next day, and reschedule your day again. And that carries on and on from Monday to Friday. So it really depends on how many days of training that the, the parent is scheduling you into and the requirement that the coaches want you to be in the training, it depends on various stage. Let's say, for example, earlier stages. It can start with any time, anywhere between three, four days, eventually up to five days and six days. Um, of course, you still get one rest day, even though you maxed up at, in a teenager's time, right? But one way or another, it's consistently doing training, consistently performing those exercises or gym session to make sure that you are growing. And that itself, it's not easy. Being consistent, it's never easy. So. On the parents' side, this is where it engage, where parents will have to build a schedule. You can't expect an 8, 9 year old to go build a schedule or 10, 11 year old to strictly build their own schedule and follow them effectively. So we build a schedule, uh, even up until this point. I still build schedule for my boy, uh, even though that he's 15, right? But he understands the, the nature of it already. The schedule would have a, a week of Monday to Sunday. Eventually, you want to schedule, hey, what's going to, go ha what's going to happen in your timetable? Saturday, Sunday, Monday to Friday, and in each section, you would have to do a certain section of training. Uh, or, more challenging part, it's wake up early morning at 5 o'clock and perform certain exercise in uh, the morning itself. And of course, that comes at a later stage when the stamina requirement is kicked in. Okay, so again, consistency, it's very important. Just like doing anything else, not just badminton, may that be education, may that be your work, may that be your career, may that be your business you want to build, it's about consistency. So if you gained this perseverance, consistency in the badminton era, would that help you in your future and, and uh, journey on, on your life? Yes, definitely it will. So it's all good stuff, right? So build it here when they're young and they bring it along and have it happen in the future uh, ages. So that's number three. So we talk about hard work, we talk about knowledge, we talk about consistency, last but not least, disciplining oneself. That is the acid test, if you ask me. Being a badminton player, you have to be very, very disciplined. What do I mean by that? I give you some examples here and just think, about this, just think, think a little deeper about it. In, in badminton, stamina is one big thing. Stamina is uh, critical. If you don't have stamina, you will not last all three games of 21 points and you, chances for you to lose the game is high. So, it's very, very important for people to avoid uh, chew food, chew as of cold food, things you just pull out from the fridge or iced-based food, uh, temperature that's lower than the body temperature is generally not encouraged. For example, ice drink, if you go out, hey, get me a meal of ice. I, I want more ice, please, so that it's more cold. It's colder. That itself is bad because it actually shrinks your lung capacity and it reduces your stamina uh, uh, of the whole self. So that itself, it's already an acid test. Very, very critical not to take cold drinks, any cold food. You could talk to any of the expert players. They would have never had cold drinks in their life. Uh, at least until a point that they, they, they stop playing, right? So that is important. That is self-discipline. Yes, in front of the dad, hey, you know what? 
I will not take cold drinks. Hey, I, I, I want to be a, a, a good player. When you turn around, hey, you know what? My dad is not around. Let's take some cold drinks. Yeah, hello. Mr. Player or Miss Player, yes, you can do that, but it will still reduce the stamina, although your dad didn't see that. Good luck to you, but by knowing what you want to achieve, your goal, what you want to, what you want to become, and how you want to become one, understanding objective, set discipline for yourself, and do that. Another good example is wake up early. Wake up early means that you also have to sleep early. If you don't sleep, well, how do you wake up early? And that itself, it's critical. And by doing that, it is already showing your determination. My goal is to become one of the best badminton players in the world. And that's what I want to do. Number one factor, sleep early. Wake up early and do some exercise in the morning. May that be a push down, may that be a sit out, whatever. whatever. Before you go to school, do that. It's critical to become part of the journey, part of the routine, and by disciplining yourself. So that four things I really want to sum it up. Number one, understanding the value of hard work. Number two, the knowledge is important. You have to go acquire and use it. Number three, you have to be consistent. And number four, definitely, you will have to be super disciplined uh, to yourself on different, different habits. With all those learning since young, and if you are able to do all those in your badminton journey, it doesn't really matter if you become Lee Chung Wei or you don't, you will be a successful person one day on whatever that you are doing. That's the real value of embarking on the journey of becoming a badminton player. You can reuse all those methodology, you can actually understand why you want to, what you want to achieve and how you want to embark on it, and that carries on. So I would say it's all win for all the players who have gone through the journey and understand the values of it. With that itself, thank you for listening. If you have not done so, please help me to subscribe, smash the like button, and share this where you think it will help others to become successful. Thank you, and we talk again. Thank you.